What if ChatGPT style AI lived in any terminal in Linux, Mac OS, or Windows, ready to refactor your scripts, translate commands, and write perfect Git commit messages on the fly? Today, we're installing Google's new Gemini CLI and pushing it to the limit. Welcome back, cloud tinkerers and home lab heroes. I am Brandon Lee, and this is Virtualization How To, Google's generative AI family, formerly Bard, now Gemini, just gained a dedicated command line interface. It drops straight into your terminal, whether you run Bash on Ubuntu, Z Shell on Mac OS, or PowerShell on Windows. That means you can question an LLM, generate or explain code, and even craft conventional commit messages without ever leaving your shell. If you liked Google's recent kubectl-ai, Gemini CLI is the natural next step but it's entirely shell agnostic. Because every interaction is text in and text out, you can chain prompts into interactive workflows, essentially building chat macros that live inside your terminal session. Gemini CLI speaks plain English or any other language right at the prompt. It streams answers in line. It translates scripts between Bash, PowerShell, and Fish, and refactors Terraform or Ansible files in seconds. My favorite trick is piping a staged git diff into Gemini and getting a fully formatted commit summary with one command. Most AI tools still force you into a browser tab. However, Gemini CLI changes that by behaving identically on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Your muscle memory stays intact whether you SSH into an Alpine container or sit in front of a Surface laptop. Need to debug a bash script on Debian? a Z shell function on Ventura, or a PowerShell module on server 2025, same command each time. That consistency also makes it perfect for teams who mix operating systems or work with a wide variety of client operating systems. The binary ships through NPM, so you'll need Node.js installed. On Linux, you would grab Node with apt, DNF, or Homebrew. On Mac OS, you would certainly use Brew, and for Windows, we lean on WinGet because it makes upgrades painless. Regardless of the platform, the final step is identical. NPM install Google Gemini CLI. Let's walk through Windows as the example because it's arguably the most involved for installation, even though it's not much. We first need to install Node.js. Let's see how to do that. You can use WinGet install dash E dash dash ID OpenJS dot node.js and the reason i'm using winget is winget makes it extremely easy to do updates on your applications so just press enter winget will install the openjs node.js module and this will prepare us for installing the gemini cli okay so node.js is installed now that we've installed node.js we simply run the npm install command to install gemini cli let's see what that looks like so now all we need to do is run this command, which is npm install dash g at google slash gemini dash cli. And just a note, if you try to run this command without closing your terminal session and reopening, it's not going to be aware of the npm command as of yet. So let's just simply close and reopen. Okay, now that we've reopened, let's try the command again. That looks better. It's actually thinking about it. So the NPM install will now go through and it will install the Gemini CLI tool on our workstation. Now, after you install Gemini CLI, the first launch asks which color scheme that you prefer. Then it prompts you to authenticate. You have the option here to log in with Google, which is the familiar login workflow with your browser and entering your Google credentials. You pick your account, you grant access, and seconds later, you're back at a Gemini prompt ready to chat. Now, as you can see, it added 432 packages in 21 seconds. So let's see if it recognizes the Gemini command as of yet which it does. So now the first thing that we're going to do or be prompted for is to basically set our interface defaults. And as you can see, you can use the up arrow, down arrow, and just press enter. 
However, I'm just going to leave it on default, press enter, and then notice you have multiple authentication methods. So it's going to need to authenticate to Google. I think this first option, login with Google, is going to be by far the most common that most will want to use, at least in the beginning when they're getting started with the Gemini CLI. So I'm just going to press enter. Of course, it's going to try to launch our app. I'm going to say allow. And as expected, it brings us up to a Google prompt. Now here we just simply enter our Google account information and then go through the normal steps to have Gemini CLI be able to use those credentials for authentication. So I'm gonna do that and then return to the Gemini prompt. Okay, so I've signed in with my credentials and now it's just asking me the question whether or not I want to sign in. I'm just gonna click sign in and there you see it basically is letting us know that Gemini Code Assist and Gemini CLI are now authorized to access the Google account. If I just simply minimize this, we can see that we now are authenticated as it has taken us to the prompt. So no longer the window for authentication. Now here are practical tasks that work identically across OSs. I'll run them in PowerShell, but you could just as easily copy paste into a bash prompt, Z shell, or something else. Responses stream line by line so you can see progress immediately. And this launches the tool in a way that will remember the context like a real programming partner that you're working with. I set the set alias G or Gemini in my PowerShell profile and alias G equals Gemini in my ZSHRC file so that I only have to type one letter. AI keeps edging closer to the tools that we actually use. And I think Gemini CLI becomes an intelligent assistant rather than just a text console. It's genuinely cross-platform. So you could be scripting in a Debian container or writing PowerShell and Windows Server. Your workflows stay consistent. Now let's look at a few workflows that I think you can use the Gemini CLI in really cool ways in your home lab or production environments. Okay, so I wanna show you guys just a few commands and workflows and just things that you probably want to know getting started with the Gemini CLI. What I have here is I'm just in my documents folder, Git folder, and I've got a repo that I've cloned down called Learning Git. So pretty boring stuff from that standpoint. But I want to use this directory to just show you guys a little bit about Gemini CLI. So we've already installed it, so I'm just going to launch it by typing the command Gemini. Now that we have Gemini launched, we can now start to query Gemini based on the folder that we're in. That's one thing that took me just a little bit to try to figure out is what context are you in? So wherever you launch Gemini from, that is the context of where Gemini is focused. So I can start doing things like, how many files are in this folder? Ask it as a question. So as you can see, we're doing file counts. It says there are nine files in this folder. I can ask things like, is this a Git repository? Has it been initialized as a Git repo? Yes, it is as, as the prompt returns. So very quick and easy information from that standpoint. Now here is where things start getting really cool that I can see Gemini CLI and other tools like it just being phenomenal tools. I have a lot of comments often when I feature an open source tool that I have cloned down from a public repository and one say, how do you know that this is a safe tool? Well, that's a good question and definitely something that you should consider on any open source project. However, open source typically is very well vetted, but AI is really great for finding anomalies or things possibly that are lying right underneath the surface. Here is something really cool to think about that we now can do. You can do things like this. Does this repo have any security vulnerabilities with it or any hint of malware? So Gemini CLI can then do the heavy lifting for you. It can examine the repository. It can examine the contents of the files and 
of course, this repository that I'm focused on is not interesting at all. Nothing malicious about it at all. It's simple text files, very little text in those files. But think about the possibilities of what this can do for you from a security perspective. Any open source repository that you clone down, if you want to run a quick sanity check, and note the return. I've read all the files in a repository based on the content of the readme.markdown file and the other text files. There is no indication of any security vulnerabilities or malware. The repository appears to be a learning project for practicing Git commands, and that it is. As you can see, lots of really cool uh, possibilities with this. Now, let me exit out of the, the terminal, and I'm gonna go back a directory. And a nice thing too here, as you see, it Every time you leave a session, it's going to make note of the tokens that you basically spent on this particular uh, AI session. So you can see input tokens and you can see output tokens. So now I'm going to change to a Terraform directory and we're going to launch Gemini again and we're focused in on the Terraform directory. Now we can do things like this that I really like as well. You can say things like, What does this Terraform code do? So let's Press enter and Gemini CLI is going to go through the files, the modules of the Terraform in the directory, and it's going to see exactly what does this Terraform code do. And I love this because as you can see here, here's a breakdown of what the code does. And it gives me a very detailed bulleted list of the code, provider configuration, Proxmox provider, LXC container resource defines a resource of Proxmox underscore LXC named test container, and it creates multiple containers. So we can see like LXC test one, test two, and so on. Hardware configuration. It sets the number of CPU cores and amount of memory. Storage configures storage, networking. You can get a really good idea of what your code actually does, especially if you've pulled down code from, again, a public repo. In short, as it says here, the code automates a provisioning of one or more identical LXC containers on a Proxmox server with predefined settings. And this is a project that I worked on and actually want to feature it in a blog post. So this is spot on. It definitely does what the Gemini CLI says it does. And it allows you to very quickly get an idea about local files and provide that context that I think a lot of times we struggle with. Now, if we exit again, I want to call out as well, you can, without going into a full chat session, you can launch Google Gemini this way. So we can type Gemini-P, going to do a quote and then an at sign, period, and then we're going to type our message. Now the at sign period tells Gemini that we want to focus on the directory where we are. Now we can actually enter our chat message, which I'm going to enter as this once again, and we're going to close our quote. And what this will do is actually run Gemini without running it in an interactive session. And it's going to return to us basically what we saw before, except that we're not launching Gemini first and typing it in into the interactive session. You can pass it in as this dash P parameter. I think that Gemini CLI represents where AI is headed. No longer will AI reside in a browser tab that we have to do everything in a browser tab, copy and paste commands or content from the browser to the destination where we're going. I think most solutions, most companies that are developing AI solutions and technologies are going to continue to bring those technologies closer and closer to where we actually do the work. Well, if you like this overview of Gemini CLI, hit like, smash subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss new home lab hacks and really cool tools and solutions such as this. You'll find my full blog post where I detail every command that we have gone over in the video. Tell me your coolest Gemini CLI prompt in the comments. And if you want to dive deeper, join our Home Lab Explorers community on school. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Thanks for watching. Do stay safe out there. Keep on home labbing. And I will see you in the next video.